What's up everybody? We're out here at Night Owl Performance out in Marietta, Georgia. And today we're actually going to do part two of our quick change differential into our E92 subframe. I've got everything laid out on the table behind me. And the first thing we're going to do is cut the middle out of it and try to get this thing to fit anywhere near the subframe. Can I help me for a second? It's been literally one minute and I already need your help. <laughs> so the first thing I had to do was measure how wide the differential was at the point where I was going to bolt it in. So I thought I would take two pieces of metal, measure the distance between them, and uh, just add three eighths to each side because I knew that was the thickness of the plate I was going to use to mount it. So then I had to find the middle of the subframe and I found these kind of brackets. This is probably not the best thing to measure off of other, honestly, but I found these brackets and I could see an edge. I measured those two and then found the middle. It looked symmetrical. It looked like it was in the middle and uh, I just drew a line there. So you can actually see I got it wrong the first time, had to remeasure it. But uh, it looks pretty symmetrical. It looks like it's in the middle. So the next thing I did was I took the width that I measured, I split it in half, and measured it from the center of the subframe so I knew where to cut it out. So I didn't want to cut the whole middle out because I would have to weld some tubes from both sides of it and then hit the differential. And that gives the differential a lot more leverage on the tubes to break. So I didn't want to just like cut it all out and weld some more in. I wanted to use as much as the stock subframe as I could. So I just cut out the basically the most minimum that I could. And uh, it wasn't too bad to get through, honestly. I just had to be careful with the angle grinder. And uh, I was able to make a pretty decent cut and get the middle cut out of it. I had to kind of fish my arms through the subframe and move it all over the place to cut it all the way around. And uh, it was a little bit of a pain, but I got it done. Oh, so the angle grinder got away from me, caught on the subframe, the piece of metal might have moved and squeezed it and shot out of my hands and down into the floor and I was able to grab the power cord. So luckily nobody got hurt, nothing happened. I just needed a new blade on the uh, angle grinder. Then we had some spots where the angle grinder just wouldn't get like uh, the bushing inside the differential that used to hold, or inside, the bushing inside the subframe that used to hold the old differential in uh, has like a, a metal, sleeve around it and uh, I couldn't get the angle grinder all the way in there so I went ahead and opted for the sawzall which basically went right through it. I think that's just it. the bushing holding it in. So if I if I like cut the bottom of it out too I think this piece will come off and then I can just knock the bushing out. Probably. Instead of cutting through the whole bushing. I'll tell you, I gained some muscle in my arms lifting the subframe and jig up and down and cutting everything and then moving the differential around. Oh man, this stuff gets heavy when you when you have it all together. But there we have it. The differential almost fits. So it's uh, fitting in between where we cut it. It is in the subframe, but uh, it's not all the way forward. We need to line it up. And you can see the jig's actually not touching the ground because the front of the differential is holding it up. So we got to cut this area here out and uh, kind of recess the differential into this tube here. And this is a pretty good example why it's important to build a jig first because if you cut that whole thing out there's like nothing holding it together. I mean very easy to bend the center of that tube when we cut basically 90% of it out. And there you have it. It's all cut out. And this took a couple of times of uh, trial and error, getting the differential to fit as far forward as we needed it for the axle stubs 
to line up in the subframe holes for the axle. But we got there eventually. And then I was on to cutting the 3 8 sheet uh, to make the side plates that will fit into the subframe. So this stuff was really hard to cut. This footage is sped up 750 times and it's still a few minutes long. It was so painful to cut through 3 8 sheet on a, on a uh, bandsaw like this. Yeah, it just took forever. I mean, each cut, each probably six inch long cut took 15 to 20 minutes. And uh, I had to do it this way. Usually we would use the plasma cutter for this or um, the plasma table, but I didn't really know the measurements that we were gonna use for the quick change. So I was kind of making it up as I went along. I was using cardboard and, and thinner metal to mock up what I needed to make um, beforehand. And then finally I would transfer it to the uh, 3 8 sheet but doing this stuff by hand was tough. I took all the measurements down after so I can make another kit pretty quick on the plasma table if anything happens to this subframe. But uh, I never want to have to do this again. I mean, it took forever and the plate is heavy and it you know, probably dulled the blade pretty good. I mean, it took significant life off the band side by cutting through this stuff. But it worked, it ended up working in the end and uh, I got all the rough cuts done on the band saw and then smoothed them all out with a grinder later. What I'm cutting now is the two plates that will weld into the rear of the subframe to catch those two bolt holes that we measured in the beginning of the video. And uh, we'll cut these two plates out. They're two different sizes because the subframe is two different sizes on each side of the differential. And uh, we'll drill four holes in them, well, two each, and uh, then we'll be able to test fit them. Finally, uh, I got to the end. I got my plate. I think I already cut the other one out there. And off to the drill press. So I had to cut pretty big holes in these. I think the holes uh, were half inch holes and this is 3 8 steel. So I had to start at <laughs> a very tiny drill bit and I had seven tool changes before I finally got up to half an inch. But uh, I took it easy, I took it slow. I didn't want to just melt the ends of the bits down in the metal and uh, I was, cooling it down with some WD-40 as I went and uh, although it took maybe an hour and a half I didn't break anything I didn't melt anything and the holes came out uh, perfectly fine and uh, fit most importantly they were the right size so um, it took a while to get through it I mean this whole process really took a long time I think uh, this video is over the course of two weeks but I got it done the reason I'm actually even making my own subframe is because for an E92, the guys that make subframes charge like $1,400. And that's very expensive for a subframe, I think. And uh, it was something I had never done before. And I wanted to give it a try, see if I can make these things on my own. I've seen some other drifters do it. Um, not even making a jig. I mean, just kind of cutting their subframe apart and welding stuff together and it kind of works. And sometimes it works for a little while and then they fix it. But I thought I'd give it a shot. So there's two holes in each of these plates and they catch the holes that we measured earlier for the differential. Finally we made it all the way through. I got a little piece of wood under there so I know when we made it all the way through it sawdust starts coming up and uh, I better just check it one more time here. Uh, yep, still goes through. Strange. It's a hole. Yep, all the way through. Okay. Check it out guys, you didn't have to watch me drill four holes, but I did drill four holes. I bolted them into the differential and I kind of put the differential where I thought it should be in the in the subframe. And uh, actually it's looking okay. I mean, there's a little bit of a gap, but uh, you know, I just measured with a tape measure and a ruler and stuff. So I can't really expect too much better than that. I don't think just cutting it with an angle grinder. And uh, you know, it's completely reasonable gap, I think to weld. 
And uh, you can see I cut the front out here as well. And actually I'm gonna catch these two bolts up on the top and the bottom. And there's one bolt inside here that I kinda had to recess into the tube. So I had to cut a little relief in there for it to go in the tube. You can actually see the bolt's not in there and the re relief's not cut, but I cut it later. Actually looking pretty good. Feeling a lot more confident at this point. You can see the axle stub shaft is right where we need it, right where the stock axle would have came out at the highest point. And here we are, all cut out. Luckily, I had another subframe in the car that I could measure the height, the, the clearance I had at the top. So I knew where I could put the differential, how far up I could get it. And uh, I had about one inch of clearance above the subframe to squeeze the differential further up. And uh, I used that to the full advantage I could because we want these differentials as high off the ground as we can get. You can see I made the two plates for the front, same method as the back ones. They were more painful because uh, one side is curved but I drilled all the same holes in them to fit the bolts and uh, got them in the subframe there. Really proud of how this is coming out at this point. I didn't know if this was gonna work at all, but uh, I got it on the ground here. It looks like it's ready to weld. So I'm gonna tack all these pieces in and uh, move out from there. I got a piece of metal on the floor just to get it a little flatter. I got a couple of little spacers sitting in the quick change a little higher up than just sitting on the ground. And uh, I tacked all those pieces in and brought it home to make sure it even fit. So this is the first time it's been in the car since we started this project uh, with the subframe in it. You can see I had to cut this area here out of the 92, which is pretty, pretty reasonable. Usually you have to cut a lot more than that. And uh, the differential sitting in there pretty good. And look at the clearance basically no clearance uh, we used about seven eighths of that inch I had you can actually see the little breather up the top there I don't know what I'm gonna do about that axle sitting right where it should be and the differential and the subframes bolted in so I was good to go then I had to start reinforcing this thing because it's just a couple of plates welded to a you know 90% of a, a subframe or maybe even less than 90% so I had this piece of scrap sitting in the garage and I was like wow this looks like it's gonna work perfectly. It's a nice 30 degree bend. And uh, I just you know, held it up against there and uh, cut it up and was able to just tack it on here. When the differential was in the car, I measured that I had two inches of clearance between this area of the differential and the bottom of the car. And this is a one and a half inch tube. So this had to be pretty close to on point uh, to be able to fit it in there. So I just tacked it in. looking pretty good I think it's going to be just fine you know one side's lower than the other so I decided to come over the top of one and into the side of the other one yeah straight enough so I put it back in the car and clears perfectly I mean I have like a quarter inch on the top of clearance and uh, I think it's gonna be all good now I can really go to town getting this subframe done done. So we gotta weld that bar we just put in there, we gotta fully weld the plates in, we gotta get these holes all filled in so you can see I welded the bar there. I think at this point I also welded all the plates in as well. And then I had to make some pieces to fill in the holes where the bushings were and actually there's like a a dimple dyed hole in the back of the subframe from BMW so I wanted to fill that in as well and uh, I went back over to Night Owl and got back on the band saw. I did a little more cardboard aided design and just traced them out on a piece of metal and went ahead and cut them out of the band saw. This is much easier because it's uh, eighth inch sheet steel so I didn't have to spend two hours in front of the band saw hunched over I could just cut these out. This piece of metal here has all these different shapes that we've cut out on the plasma table over the over the course of this project and uh, I don't like to waste basically anything at all so you know I'd rather cut for a little longer and get more use out of the metal rather than just uh, throw it out when there's a bunch of holes in it like this you can see I was able to get all, all four of these pieces out of it even though there's a bunch of holes in it and uh, things like that I think that big rectangle is my AccuSump bracket those strange 
kind of curved rectangle shapes down at the bottom there are for my motor mount brackets. And uh, the one that looks like Darth Vader on the right is my gas tank filler bracket. So, or my fuel cell uh, fill neck bracket. So, I don't like to throw these things out and I reuse them. Back to the bandsaw. Sorry this is a little dark. I tried to lighten it up a little bit, but we won't be here for long. We're just cutting these little circles out. Back over at my house, I've welded some uh, kind of aesthetic plates in. This is just an eighth inch plate here, and uh, I ground off all that spatter. I don't know why it was spattering that badly. But I uh, got the tube fully welded in, and I sunk a 3 8 plate down the front of this to keep the front bar from crushing for any reason. And there's the plates all welded in that we just cut out on the bandsaw. So actually, this is pretty close to the finished product. So pretty nice, I'm pretty stoked on it. I just went ahead and rounded off a lot of the, the rougher edges and corners right after this with a angle grinder and a flap wheel and uh, kind of made it a little easier to slide in by beveling all the edges. So there's a close up of that nice spatter right there. I ground all that off, so. But actually the factory subframe has a lot of spatter on it. And after that I went ahead and ground those stock differential brackets off. And I threw some paint on it. I matched up the WiseFab uh, color. I think it's old Ford blue. There's actually two Ford blues. So if you go to the your local hardware store and look for Ford blue, that's new Ford blue. And it's a couple shades lighter than old Ford blue. And old Ford blue actually matches the WiseFab pretty well. Came out pretty good. Super proud of this project. Can't wait to actually you know throw some horsepower at it and make sure that my differential doesn't come flying out of the bottom of my car. I don't think it will. This is pretty similar to how HGK holds theirs in in their Eurofighters. So there you have it. Guys, if this video helped you, remember to subscribe to my channel. Check out the rest of the project on the E92. Like this video if you liked it. Leave a comment down below if you have a question. There's a lot of steps that are skipped in this video, so uh, I'm happy to help you further if you're trying to do this on your own. And uh, I got it all installed with everything. Everything seems to be lining up. We're going to get some axles and a uh, drive shaft made soon. And uh, once the car is running, we can really put some abuse on this thing to see if it's going to hold up. But I think it's going to. I think it's okay, and uh, I think we're good to go. So see you guys next time.